you're listening to Cosmic Cousins Soul Centered Astrology. For grounding your ass from all the new age sass. I am your host, Jeff Henshaw. Season four of Cosmic Cousins is dedicated to honoring the interconnectedness of our universal family through embodied health, self-discovery, and deeper learning. Oh my goddess, y'all. Is it season four already? (laughs) This show, it's been out for almost an entire year. Can you believe? I'm so thrilled to be here for another season. Even just hearing the intro music just gave me all of these feels. And I'm sitting here, I'm feeling real cute, sipping on some dandelion root tea out of this really funky and cool Aquarius mug that was sent in to me from a listener on the show, Bear in a Paint Shop on Instagram. And so check out their work. It's always so cool to receive gifts from you all. So thank you, Bear, for my Aquarius mug. I love it. And it's actually really helped to ground me during this eclipse season. And wow, we made it. We made it through the eclipses. We've made it through the summer of retrogrades. It's coming to a close. And Mercury has now officially gone direct, which is why there is a new season of Cosmic Cousins. And so... I don't even know where to begin. I feel like so much has happened in this month off that we had. Um, But literally, this eclipse season, as eclipse seasons will do, has completely changed and upgraded my life. And so I just signed a year lease yesterday, which I haven't signed a year lease in years. And I'll be living with our cosmic cousin, Cancer, Doug Peck, who was on the season three finale not too long ago. So I'm excited to be getting into that. Um, I've been working on some exciting collaborations and projects that I'm stoked to announce at some point in the coming weeks. I was also on Heidi Rose Robbins' astrology podcast, which you might have heard me talk about her before, which was Beyond Words. She's incredible. It's called The Radiance Project, and it's on iTunes. I was on episode 83 And so if you want to hear us go into some deep astro combo, check that out. I also led an astro retreat in upstate New York York during the eclipse as well, which was really epic. And the group of people that gathered for this treat were so incredible. And so lots of magic and healing has taken place for me over this eclipse season. I know that a lot of people I've talked to have been experiencing a lot of transition and upgrades in their life as well. And um, it's been a hard season for a lot of people. So Um, I'm happy to be back and here holding space for you. If you're new to the show, welcome. This is a deep dive into soul-centered astrology, and this podcast is perfect for new students, but also people who are masters at astrology and have been studying for a while. There's going to be a lot for you on this show to dive into. So each week on the show, We dive into the current transits, and we do that with guided meditations for embodied health, which is a big part of my practice as an astrologer and just in general, a life practice is to always bring it back into the body with the breath. And so meditations are on the show, deep conversation with artists and healers that are celebrating their solar return. So for instance, today on the show, we're going to be talking with some Leos because we're right at the end of Leo season. And then over the next month, we'll be diving into Virgo. And so each season of the show, it's going to give a different feel and it allows us to feel into the energy of the signs. And then also, what I'm really excited about the show, if you, if you can't tell, is that we're upgrading the archetypes of astrology by honoring legendary women. And this is the Queen of the Zodiac series. And so we have all of that to look forward to. And with that being said, I think, yeah, I think we can just go ahead and start this episode off. And so we'll start with a meditation. 
and you can go ahead and bring the awareness to the breath as we transition into that now. So as you bring the awareness to the breath, you can begin by slowing the breath down and taking a deep nourishing inhale. And then as you exhale, allow the muscles of the face to relax, the jaw to unclench. And so today, August 22nd, if you're listening listening to this live, it marks the last day of Leo season. And we are transitioning into Virgo. And so we're moving from fire to earth. So we can first just start by honoring that. And so with embodied health and astrology, we work with the different parts of the body that the astrological sign rules over. And so first, we can start by breathing into the lion's heart. And so this is the part of the body, the heart, that Leo rules over. So as you breathe into the heart, fill the entirety of the chest cavity and the lungs up with new life, new breath, allowing each breath to be an act of self-love. On the exhale, you can allow the shoulders to roll down the back and you'll feel the chest begin to open. And so Leo energy is all about learning how to love yourself. Anahata is a Sanskrit word for the heart, anahata. And this means unstruck or unhurt. And so it's a purity or an innocence, unstruck, unhurt. And so Leo is tapping us back into the innocence and joy of a child that radiates from the heart. And so if you remember from cancer season, we were working with intergenerational healing, We were connecting with bringing healing to our relationship to our mothers and to the matriarchy, which we can feel into in the body, in the rib cage and in the breast. And so we move under the breast now. We move under the rib cage, which is protecting the heart. And we connect here. And so this energy, Leo, is about you. It's about self-love. We are moving from intergenerational healing to inner child healing. And so go ahead and bring an image of your childhood self to your mind, to your heart. And check in with this child today. How is your inner child feeling today? Are they scared and alone? Or are they feeling joyful and free? And so first we tap into into that energy of the child within. And then we upgrade and become our own parent. Which this is what Leo is really inviting us into. Is becoming the leader of love in our own life. Our own parent. And so send this child love And let this child know that you are here for them. That they're safe. They're loved. They're seen. And so take another breath into that. Breathing in to this energy of the child that lives within. And so you'll keep one hand on the heart. And then you'll place one hand on the belly. This is the energy of the Leo Virgo cusp. And so we transition into Virgo this week. And so we're now moving down to the belly, the belly of the Virgin. And I won't speak too much on the Virgo energy because that will be our episode next week. But I really encourage you to feel into this cusp energy this week, this transition. And so Virgo, like the digestive system, like the belly, is constantly assimilating and working. 
And so as we go into this Virgo energy, it's important to continue to be a loving parent to ourselves, a loving parent to our inner child, so that we aren't overworking, we're not overjudgmental. And so take this opportunity now to remind yourself to have fun, to remind yourself to shine your light, that you don't have to be perfect, to remind yourself to be joyful. And so soak up this last bit of Leo energy because we need it going forward into Virgo. And so a deep breath into the belly and all the way up to the heart. And know that when we transition from one sun season to another, it can be really exciting. I often feel like ready to, sh- to switch gears, shift gears into an, a new energy. But it can also bring up a lot of shifts, both internally and externally. It can bring up old emotions. And so just being super gentle with yourself this week, being super gentle with your breath, your body. And so a few more breaths into the heart. And this will transition us right into our deep dive of understanding Leo. And so Leo, right? I think this is really cool that we're talking about Leo at the end of Leo's season. Normally, I'll introduce the archetype at the beginning of the season. And so this is a wonderful opportunity for you to listen to what I'm going to share and see how much it resonates with what you've experienced over the last month. And so some of this might be review for those of you on the Patreon uh, for the show, because I, I talked about understanding Leo in one of the episodes. Um, but yeah, with Sun in Leo, the world is awake, right? We're in the middle of summer. And so the world is awake with personality, we can say. Literally, flowers and trees are at their climax. They're at their fullest expression here in the Northern Hemisphere. And so we leave behind the sentimental, nostalgic family vacation time of cancer, which at this point to me feels like it was like a year ago. And then Leo season brings us into our heart and our, into our sense of personal adventure. And I remember even the night that the sun transitioned into Leo, I literally dropped what I was doing at my home and went out and danced. And I like opened up my heart and I just like, I was ready to shine and to let loose. The transition from Cancer to Leo on the retreat. So at the retreat that I led um, just last month, we spent time and immersed ourselves in ritual around each of the 12 astrological signs. And so Cancer, for some reason, it always lines up this way, but synchronicities will start happening of what's going on in nature around us based off the signs. And so during our cancer gathering, it actually started thundering and pouring down rain. And we're inside this geodesic dome and everyone is talking about their family members because themes of cancer is family and mother, grandmother. And so people were talking about their relationship to their moms and to their grandmas. And we were releasing any sort of karmic debt that we felt in our family line. And so it was kind of a dark gathering that we had. And then we had like a three or four hour break. And then we regathered in the evening for our Leo gathering. And at first people were like, I don't know how I'm going to transition into this Leo energy after all of that deep, dark work that we just did. But then once we did, it felt like this huge release and this rite of passage way to celebrating and to being joyful and playful after that deep release of cancer. And so during this time of year, we actually may find ourselves super in the present moment. Um, Cancer is ruling over the past. And then we could say Virgo is, I mean, Leo is the present moment that follows that past. And so the sun 
is the ruling planet of Leo. So it's all about conscious reality, the here and now. And so it's July 23rd to August 22nd are the dates of Leo. And so all around us during this time of year, we're gifted with beautiful reminders of the power and the teacher of the personality of life. And this infuses us with the inspiration to shine out our vibrant colors to the world, which is soul-centered Leo to inspire others to shine with our own light. And so new possibilities can flash into our lives during Leo season. So be thinking what has happened over the last month, have new insights flashed into your life. Many of us are infused with new inspiration or a new direction in life. And so we might have found ourselves taking a new turn, finding the confidence to do that. And all of this is the fire energy that is refueling us for the, for the autumn months to come around the corner, or the spring months if you are on the southern hemisphere. So it's kind of cool, right, to be talking about Leo here at the end of Leo season. So is this what you've been feeling? Um, if we're not grounded in our individuality, though, and our sense of purpose during Leo season, or if we're unsure about our rights to express our unique contributions to the world, we might find ourselves facing low self-esteem, or even shame, or even like the belittlement that we might have felt as a child might resurface during this time. This can be a time where we feel like we need to be accomplishing something. Leo is very driven, right? It's fixed fire. Um, but we might travel without direction if we're not so sure of ourselves, or we could even become lethargic. This is a time of being lethargic as well, halting in the heat altogether. That's the other side of fixed fire. So fixed means it's the modality. It means it's the middle of the season. So we're in the middle of summer, meaning we could become quite stuck in the element. Fixed can mean stuck. And so Fixed fire, we could see that as a drought or even burnout. Or you can think of it as when like you get too much sun. And my ginger ass knows that really well. And so, and that can be painful, right? We don't want too much of the sun energy. It's overdoing it. So fixed fire, Leo is represented in the tarot as the king of wands. Kings are fixed energy, wands are fire. So this is about the ownership of your ambition. It's leading from the heart with purpose and passion. It's grounding your creativity. This is the energy of the king of wands. And in its highest, it's using your connection to wands, which is a spiritual connection to creation for the betterment of society, for holding space for others, king, king of wands, Leo. So the higher octave of Leo in the tarot is the strength card, which is, is a softening of this. And it shows a woman in all white. She's got an infinity symbol above her head as a halo. And she's calming a ferocious lion. And so it looks like she's like performing Reiki even. And so... This may be a time of year where we really are being asked to sit with our deep desires, our primal emotions, our anger and aggression and rage, our wild nature. And so water signs often get typecasted as the emotional signs. Fire signs are also deeply emotional. Really all signs, are we all experience emotion, but fire signs are... Also, you can think of with emotion, and it's like emotion and passion. And so, you know, I, Madonna was in our top 16 Leo Queens, and she really gets us into this feline, fierce, lioness energy. And she also has Uranus in Leo as well. And so Sun and Uranus in Leo is giving us this, like, innovative and, like, Um, rebellious Leo energy. And so it's about having this fierce quality and doing it in a way that we're channeling it with ease and grace and a softness. I think that Viola Davis really feels to me like the strength card in the tarot. And so... Yeah, so we've, we've been talking about the season of Leo, but what does it mean to be 
Elio's son to be a baby that incarnated during this time of year. And so the personality side, this type cast Elio as uh, warm, action-oriented, driven by the desire of love. Driven by the desire to be loved and to express love. Driven by the desire to be admired. This is the same way nature is this time of year. It's longing uh, to be seen and appreciated because they're at their height. And don't forget this, especially with plants that you take care of, especially during Leo season. Tell them that you love them. Tell your plants you love them. Sing to them. This is how to interact with the Leo. And so Leo's, they have a royalty about them with this connection to being seen, which often gets them dubbed as self-centered on the lower end. Um, We also might hear them called the life of the party. But either way, there's a magnetism about this energy of Leo. And some Leos I know, though, are actually... They're quiet individuals, they're introverted, but they do hold this ability to influence through their presence. And so, yeah, taking into consideration this time of year, the little Leos that came to us when the world on the Northern Hemisphere was awake and ruled by the sun and everything's vibrant and colorful, From a soul-centered perspective, what we can say is that these Leos came here, they incarnated here to search for wholeness within the self. And that is then in turn allowing them to develop a strong sense of their unique individuality, but also to understand how that fits into the collective. And so Aquarius is the polar sign to Leo. Soul-centered astrology is always looking to the polar sign about bringing it to the center. And so we do that by looking to the opposite side of the wheel of Leo, which Aquarius, right? So Aquarius is about the collective inspiring others. So it's the knowledge of the self as a Leo, as an individual, while simultaneously being a part of the whole. And so Leos may forget about the collective. They may seem self-centered to others, especially to Aquarius and other air signs. Their need to dominate their environment, to make themselves a unique expression of life may come through their personality and the weight of it. And so this could be one way that this energy is manifesting, perhaps because these babies incarnated in a time where everyone's personality is on fire, so they may at times feel a tremendous need for attention. But underneath that, it could be rooted in a lack of belief in the self to truly be unique. But as the Leo moves beyond the sense of self and is focusing its energy on the collective, this is when we can then begin to feel the shift. And so um, really a lot of the work as a Leo can be working through insecurity or shame as related to the sense of self, which this is solar plexus work. Or if you're in a relationship with a Leo or have a family member that is a Leo, be gentle with them. Reflect back to them how beautiful and lovely they are. Encourage them to share their gifts and shine their light. And so as Leos awaken to their gifts and the invitation of this time of year, while also exploring the polar energy of Aquarius, Leo develops an increasing awareness of how to be creatively self-expressive and doing it in a way that isn't to stand out, right? but to be a part of something that's way bigger, to inspire diversity and to redefine beauty. And so, again, strength card is the card in the tarot that correlates with Leo, and we see that she's a vessel for God. It's a gentle woman wearing all white that's grounded and rooted in her confidence enough to go calm a ferocious lion. And so, Leo evolves and becomes a leader and teacher when Leo no longer views the self as a sinner, but instead integrates with all of life 
by first developing the ego and then surrendering it to the cosmos. And so what an honor it is to feel into this Leo energy and to be beholding in its presence. And as a double Aquarius, this is an energy that is really, really profound for me to explore. And so, yeah, I encourage you to breathe into your heart, feel into your own sense of bravery and courage. And again, if you're wanting to explore this Leo energy more, I've posted on the Instagram quite a lot about this Leo energy. I also have some other episodes and meditations on the Patreon for this show. And so if you're picking up what I'm putting down and you're enjoying this content, know that it is coming to you every week now on the podcast during season four for the next three months, which will take us from Leo, Virgo, Libra, and Scorpio. But if you would like to support me in this free offering, um, I could greatly use your support. And so you can become a Patreon of the show by signing up at patreon.com slash cosmic cousins. And Patreon members also receive special discounts and promotions as well as many episodes during off season. And so we were on off season this past month. And so we have a quite a lot of new Patreon members to shout out. So at this time, I'm going to shout out all of our new Patreons. And so a very special, warm Leo. Thank you to Sarah Stone, Amanda Michelle Dellinger, Valerie Martin, Andrea B., Renee Meyer Hale, Jesse Ann A., Colleen McSpirit, Paige West, Kate Hanessa, Michaela Gross, Eliza Bell, Claire Harnett Mann, Aubrey Walsh, Matthew Lovini, Amy Fletcher, Caitlin Hugh, Monica Anderson, Alicia C., Megan Murphy, Chihiro Mather, Maya Horton, Alicia Brown, Megan Murphy, Jason Lagrain, Mimi Robson, Ariel C, Lou Guzman Woods, and Billy Pierce. Thank you so much, Patreon members. This show would not be possible without you, and our community is growing, and I'm super stoked about that. In other news, if you're in Los Angeles, I am leading a 12-week astrological ritual immersion, immersion, and it will be taking place at Yogala Studios in Echo Park. And so if you're interested in being in community, you know I am. I'm a double Aquarius, and so I'm all about creating space for community. And so, yeah, if you're interested in getting into the community fields while also learning about astrology, you can find out more information on my website, astrologycousins.com, or you can send me an email at jeff at brooklynfools.com. And so now, let's transition into the Queen of the Zodiac. So this past month, we started with 16 Leo queens, and we narrowed it down to two. Our final two is Viola Davis and Whitney Houston. And so I'm going to offer a little recap since we were in off-season during this Leo exploration. And so what I will start with is that the Queen of Leo tournament has been the most competitive tournament that we've had. Um, has also brought us a little bit of drama too. And it's so cool to really feel into the energy that we create when we go into these Queen of the Zodiac tournaments. Because the Queen of Gemini tournament felt very like, oh my gosh, we don't know who's going to win. It kind of felt up in the air and a little exciting and we were learning a lot. Um, the Queen of Cancer, it felt like, we were really honoring these women in like a deep felt way. And then the Queen of Leo, people were like fangirls for some of these queens. And so it's actually been quite fun. For instance, Tori Amos fans were next level 
I learned so much about Leo by feeling into the energy that Tori brought. And so the Tori Amos fan club was notified about the voting. And so there was a surge of Tori fans commenting and posting, which was really thrilling for me on one end. On the other end, I also felt kind of protective of those who tune into the show and who are resonating with astrology as vocabulary because I really wanted people to be voting based off of astrology. And so it was a great opportunity for me to like tune into, wow, this might be how Leo actually feels. It's kind of like protective of their group, their tribe, their family. And while at the same time, um, maybe when we're honoring Leo, it doesn't necessarily have to be who's the most Leo, but who do we like the most as well? Who has been a 